the last thing I expected nowadays was to come back as myself instead of my character. But what can I say? Doom has a habit of making me do things I normally wouldn't dream of doing. We're making good progress with episode 10. Still a ways away from being done, but I think we'll be able to show off something relatively soon. Coming off of the reveal trailer and GameSpot's interview with Hugo and Marty has left me just as excited as I was for Doom Eternal, if a teeny cautious. During the interview, Hugo mentioned that the team has reimagined Dark Age's combat loop from scratch. That by itself isn't strange or new since Eternal already took Doom 4's combat in a different direction. I even remember Hugo mentioning he'd like to take a different approach to the sequel's gameplay during one of his many streams at the time. What I find curious is the lack of any real glory kills, and how classic Doom served as a heavier inspiration for combat. What helped set New Doom apart from its past gameplay-wise were those executions. This mechanic played a massive part in the duology's flow state, since it was your primary way of refilling health and, at times, armor. I doubt we'll be relying on health kits or armor pickups anytime soon, but I'm genuinely interested in seeing how Doom the Dark Ages is going to handle this shakeup. Because I've always believed the best thing for these newer titles was differentiating themselves from Doom 1 and 2. Those games are legendary. I don't think we'll ever get something similar ever again. Not in the AAA industry, anyway. So taking more from them may raise expectations in a way I don't think could ever be fulfilled. Personally, I'm more excited than I am wary. If this change works, we may have a heavier hitting, faster, better flowing experience, more akin to the games I love. I just hope my faith in a studio isn't misplaced. Again. Another small concern of mine were mentions of Dark Ages being more cinematic. Granted, I tense up whenever I hear that nowadays. However, for this series, it's vital that you never bog down the player with too many cutscenes. I loved Eternal Story, and I'll always crave more of this series' delicious lore. Just don't make any of this mandatory. That does also include the Atlan and the Demon Dragon sections. I want them to be more than just set pieces. That about wraps up my concerns. Now I can gush. They shoot Doom Guy out of a cannon in the beginning of this trailer! Who needs a missile or a nuke when you've got something infinitely better? This man is the nuke! Hell, he's got two on each arm! My boy has a fur cape and he rocks the look so good! We'll finally be able to pilot a fucking Atlan! Ride a Hell Dragon! And best of all, lever action shotgun! And he reloads it like the security officer from Marathon! Well, there's a reference nobody's gonna understand. The fact we're gonna be playing what happened within the Slayer's Testaments is bound for a good time. I've always wanted to see the events that transpired during this period. Doom Guy's battle with the Great One, the fall of Argent Dinur, or how he ended up getting trapped inside the coffin. Judging by the game's darker atmosphere, I get the feeling my expectations may not be too far off. A small part of me expects, and craves, a Halo Reach inspired epilogue where we fight until the Hell Temple collapses on us. Whatever happens, it'll definitely spice up subsequent Doom 4 and Eternal playthroughs. Is that a classic Doom inspired M? Sorry Quake fans, we need to borrow the nail gun for a bit. This shield is fucking awesome! I never thought I'd be shooting up grounded remains at dead guys. Did I mention the fur cloak? Flip, hold me. I think I'm gonna faint from all this swooning. 